three parts. Start hydrated, maintain hydration throughout. Part three is hydrate post to fix it, okay? We gave you the half ounce per pound of body weight equation. So you start the training hydrated. We gave you the, you know, two milliliters per kilogram slash body weight divided by 30 to stay hydrated. Then we gave you the 125%. Um, but I can actually just give you sort of, I'm giving you another list here, I'm sorry. But it is my five-step cheater guide for optimizing hydration for performance. Sorry, step number one, drink a lot of water first thing in the morning. This gets everything kickstarted, gets you going. It also saves you from having to drink a bunch of water at night, which is then going to compromise your sleep. What's a lot? Depending on how big you are, the general thing I'll tell people is, like one of the very first things you should do throughout your day, you wake up, go to the bathroom, as you're consuming your sunlight, consume water. This is maybe chugging a full glass. It's honestly what I do. It's not the best route, but I'll just so get that 16 going. 16 ounces. 16 ounces or so is great. It's fine. If you're larger, um, you know, I'm, I'm 165 to 70 pounds, depending on what's going on, maybe a little higher sometimes. If you're 225 pounds, maybe that number is 30 ounces. All right, so you just sort of scale up and down. And the only reason I say a lot is it just depends on, on what you're doing. And I also should clarify, I don't really literally mean chug. Just like sips, because the faster you drink water, the faster it's going to expand blood volume. The faster it expands blood volume, the faster you get rid of it. Hmm. Um, I don't think a lot of people know that. Yeah, this is, uh, maybe this is clarifying. This is also, we sort of talked about earlier, if you drink too much water, you'll dilute the system. Well, if you have a diluted system, your body's first reaction is to rid of water, to bring total blood volume down, right? Remember, if you were to go to a doctor and they looked at your total blood volume and they're like, man, you're five and a half liters, you're going to be like, holy crap, you're going to be put on a diuretic because you don't want to have a heart attack and have blood pressure. I, I wonder if people are drinking a 16 ounce glass of water or other fluid all at once before going to sleep. And that's why they're waking up in the middle of the night. Totally. Given what you just said, probably a better um, protocol would be to sip on a glass of water in the final hour or two hours before sleep. You, generally, the number we say is three hours. In the three hours preceding sleep, you want to basically limit fluid intake to sipping as needed. Well, I think that's, I'm going to start that tonight yeah. because I wake up generally once per night to use the bathroom and I do drink some fluids before I go to sleep mostly because yeah. I'm pretty thirsty at that time. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to start sipping that water in the uh, three hours heading into sleep. Yeah, so you can actually pay attention to is, um, to go back, this is actually, I love doing this stuff, but if you're waking up at night and you have a very dry mouth. Mm -hmm. Not okay. for me. All right, because it can be one of two things. You might actually be dehydrated. And so then what the mistake people make is they're like, man, my mouth is so dry. I keep getting up to drink water at night. That makes you then pee too much. What that also indicates is probably your mouth breathing. So a lot of ways to fix people waking up and urinating too much at night is to tape your mouth and or use a, a dilator over your nose. And then what happens is you don't feel like you have a dry mouth, so you don't get up to consume any extra water throughout the night. So that actually reduces your, your fluid intake so you don't have the problem of actually now having too much fluid mm. to do it. And so there's another reason why mouth taping can really, really help. Um, if you are having those issues uh, and or snoring, those are not benign. Uh, that's a really, like you really should get some work on those. Um, something, you're, you're not sleeping very well is the way I'll say it. It doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean something life-threatening, but it's not a, a good thing. So um, you're going to run kind of your triaging things back and forth. So if you're like, I'm waking up to pee a lot, but my mouth isn't thirsty. Okay, great. Then you may actually have just a water consumption issue. If it is, my mouth is dry, but I'm actually waking up and I'm having these large urinations, then you're not actually dehydrated, you're just breathing through your mouth. If you're waking up and your mouth is dry and there's not a lot of pee there, then you actually might actually legitimately be uh, underhydrated. So a little bit of a game you can play there. Well, that's super informative. I think that um, the point alone that gulping a bunch of water all at once is going to cause you to need to excrete that water soon after um, is a really important point. Also for people that are going to, I don't know, give a talk or, um, you don't want to have to get up to use the restroom. You have to sit through a long meeting. Yeah. yeah. Um, clearly I'm violating all these rules up until right now. I've been, you know, not, I, I sort of follow the seagull approach to, uh, <laughs> to consuming fluids just gloom, gloom, yeah. in, um, enormous volumes. I'm going to start sipping, um, fluids instead. Um, what are some of the other rules of hydration? Right. So you're going to wake up, you're going to start your day and start hydrated. So 
you know, you're, you're consuming a larger percentage of your water earlier in the day. Then you get all the performance enhancing effects of water and you don't have to worry about it compromising your sleep. So that's step number one. Also, now you're going to start your session closer to hydration. All right, great. Number two, eat mostly real whole foods. Why? Interesting. What you may or not have thought about is a huge determinant of your hydration status is your food choices. Uh, if you look at different foods, uh, for example, most fruit, uh, watermelon, watermelon is like 95 plus percent water, right? Fantastic source. Also, by the way, since we're here, it is not extremely high in carbohydrate. It's not extremely high in sugar. It is by percentage, but it, since it is almost exclusively water you're eating, uh, it is not uh, something that is extremely dangerous in terms of sugar. Um, I, there alone, probably of all the things we've talked about in the six, six episodes, uh, that comment right there will probably blow the internet to pieces and I'll probably get hate mail for life for it, but from people throwing sugar, water, ah. water, throwing watermelons. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, I don't fun. think the point is that sugar is necessarily bad. I think the point is that for most people, they're ingesting too much sugar. Most people. Yeah. Um, and it, it's interesting. Oftentimes the people who are justifying the ingestion of sugar are exactly the kind of people that should not ingest so much sugar. So there's a little bit yeah. of a, well, of a user the point, bias. The there. point here is if you're eating whole real food, this is like now we're, we're right. kind of splitting hairs right. about this thing. So, right. so morning eat, hydration, consume eat whole food. Real food. Yeah. Yep. Now, important point here. If you compare it to other foods, um, like actually meat is, is a very high percentage of fluid, uh, depending on how well or long you've cooked it. You will reduce it. Remember you said earlier, uh, we're 70% water, right? So if you're eating meat, you're getting actually a big chunk of water. As you cook it, of course, you lose some of that. But meat can be like, I wouldn't call it a hydrating food item, but it is not as low as something like a biscuit, which can be actually like 10% water. That's why it's like dry and dense, which doesn't mean it's bad for you, but there. If you're eating highly processed foods, almost by association, that means they've been dehydrated or partially, right? So you're just getting less total fluid intake. In addition, they have also been highly salted in general, right? So now we're in this position where we're underhydrated and highly salted. Bad spot. If you now switch over to mostly, again, just mostly whole real food-ish, whatever that means to you, then your hydration is going to skyrocket. You're going to have a lot. So you're eating a ton of food. In fact, it should be uh, a large percentage of the fluid intake you have actually should be coming from your food and you shouldn't have to be smashing water bottles after water bottle all day. In that case though, you do need to add salt back. So we do see this a lot with people who try to make a transition from maybe a suboptimal nutritional lifestyle and they, they give up a little bit of the processed food and they come over and they start having problems because they're not actually consuming enough salt. So add that back. Easy way to do that. You can use electrolytes and we could talk about those numbers if you want. If you just salt your food that you're making, you know, to taste, that's going to get most people in a, in a pretty good spot. 